Hello, welcome to lesson 2 on the topic number system. If you remember, in lesson 1, we had looked at the number system tree and the classification of numbers. I had shared with you that if you look at all the branches of the number system tree, then every number in this world would fit in somewhere in the number system tree. Are there some more categorizations of numbers that uh, are important and that I should be aware of? Absolutely. I am going to talk about the most important categorization of numbers. And that happens to be prime and composite prime and composite numbers. Okay. I will share with you the reason for saying so. But understanding prime and composite numbers is going to be very essential to our performance. Let us begin by talking about what are prime numbers. If I would have asked you this question, then possibly many of us would have said that a number which is divisible by 1 and itself is a prime number. I'm sorry, this definition is not complete. It is not correct. What is the correct definition of a prime number? The correct definition of a prime number is a number which has got exactly two different factors or divisors is a prime number. I repeat, a number which has got exactly two different factors or divisors is a prime number. What is a composite number? A composite number is a number which has more than two different factors or divisors. A number which has got more than two different factors or divisors is a composite number. Now, here comes the interesting part. What about 1? 1, please appreciate, has got only one factor. That is itself. And therefore, by this definition, 1 is neither prime nor composite. That will be our first learning. So what is the first learning? The first learning is 1 by definition is neither prime nor composite. Okay, 1 by definition is neither prime nor composite. It does not fit into the category of prime numbers. It does not fall into the category of composite numbers. So what is the smallest prime number? Therefore, the smallest prime number is 2. Let's put it down on the board. So therefore, 2 is the smallest, 2 is the smallest prime number. 2 has got another interesting property as far as this domain is concerned. And you know what is that? 2 is the only even number which is also prime. Now please try to understand it's absolutely logical. Any number, if it is even, will be divisible by 2. That is what makes it even. Any number, if it is even, will be divisible by 2. Every number will be divisible by 1. Every number will be divisible by itself. So every other even number than 2 will automatically be a composite number and therefore what is the third learning 2 is the only even 2 is the only even prime number all other prime numbers all other prime numbers are necessarily odd okay is the only even prime number all the other prime numbers are necessarily odd right so this is the third point which we should be aware of uh, what is the fourth the fourth is there are 25 prime numbers 
from 1 to 100. If you count from 1 to 100, you are going to come across, you are going to count 25 prime numbers. Now please understand, this is not something which can be extended. So it's not that there are 25 prime numbers from 1 to 100, so there will be 50 prime numbers from 1 to 200. No, I don't know. In fact, I will have to count that. Okay, but one thing is very sure, there are 25 prime numbers when counted from 1 to 100. Now, you would be wondering, why is it that I am sharing this in particular information with you? Because a lot of examiners, a lot of people who make questions for the competitive exams, they actually use this property while framing the questions. Okay, so there are 25 prime numbers from 1 to 100. Now, if you are wondering as to how this can be used to form a question, let me share this with you as to how questions of competitive exams, questions in competitive exams can be framed beautifully. Let me share this example with you, okay? And please do remember, we are talking about the property that there are, we are talking about the property that there are 25 prime numbers from 1 to 100. Okay, now uh, let me write this question. What is the question? How many numbers from 1 to 100 can be written as a product of its factors in more than one way okay you know what is a very important attribute of a good competitive exam in a good competitive exam it is equally challenging to comprehend what the question is asking you to do and this is one such example please look at the question again what is the question saying how many numbers from 1 to 100 can be written as a product of its factors in more than one way? I'm sorry, but many times we are unable to understand what this question is asking us to do. Okay, let me give you an example. Uh, 7 is a prime number. 7 can be written as a product of its factors in only one way. Why? Because 7 has got only two factors. What about 11? 11 can be expressed as a product of its factors in only two, in only one way because again 11 is also like 7, a prime number. What about 13? 13 can also be expressed as a product of its factors in only one way. That means every prime number can be written as a product of its factors in only one way. What about composite number? Let us take the example of 12. I can write 12 as 1 into 12. I can write the same 12 as 2 into 6. I can write, write the same 12 as 3 into 4. You know why? Because 12 is a composite number. So it has got more than two factors. And therefore, there is more than one way of expressing that number as a product of its factors. Now let's come back to this question. It's beautiful. How many numbers from 1 to 100 can be written as a product of its factors in more than one way? That means, indirectly, what is this question asking me? Indirectly, this question is asking me how many composite numbers are there from 1 to 100. Okay, now think about this and please think it stepwise. What is the first challenge for me? The first challenge is, am I able to understand quickly what the question is asking first? What is the second? Now I come to know that, okay, this question is asking me about the number of composite numbers. What has my teacher told me? I have been told that there are 25 prime numbers from 1 to 100. So what usually students do? From 100, they will subtract 25 and say that there are 75 numbers. I am sorry, but this is wrong because you have made a basic mistake. What is the mistake that you have committed? Out of this 100, you have subtracted 25 prime numbers. But you please 
remember, please appreciate that in the remaining 75 numbers, you also have one which is not composite. So what is going to be my correct answer? My correct answer will be 75 minus 1. There are 74 numbers from 1 to 100 which can be written as a product of its factors in more than one day. Okay. So you know what was the purpose of this example? The purpose of this example was to tell you that you are not going to be asked properties. You are going to be asked questions where you will have to apply the properties. Right? And what is the second thing? The second thing is my, my approach in solving a question has to be stepwise where I need to quickly comprehend the question, know the concept and then go on to solve the questions. Okay? Now let's come back to what we were talking about. So what were we talking about? We were looking at the properties of uh, prime and composite numbers. And what was the last property that you had written? The last property that you must have written was uh, there are 25 prime numbers from 1 to 100. Now this is the fifth point. How to find out, how to find out if a given number is prime or not. And this is a very interesting discussion, children. How to find out whether a given number is prime or not? If I give you a number, and uh, uh, let me remind you, all of you, I mean, not only the students from computer science background, but all of you have done this as a C program, right? How do you find out whether a given number is prime or not? There, what you, you usually do, you start from 2 and go up to half of the number, just to remind you. You start from 2, go up to half of the number, uh, check the divisibility from 2 up to n by 2, uh, store the value in a counter and based on that counter, you take a decision whether the number is prime or not. But children, mathematically, that is not the easiest way. What is the easiest way? Mathematically, the easiest way is Listen to this carefully. Check the divisibility by all the prime numbers. Check the divisibility by all the prime numbers up to under root of that number. Now, this is very, very interesting. And this is where I would like to tell you, I would like to share with all of you that one needs to be conceptually good. If one has to perform well, one needs to be conceptually good. So, what is the what is the easiest way? The easiest way is check the divisibility by all the prime numbers up to under root of n. Now, why this is so, we need to understand. So, we will take an example. Let me take the example of 72. I am going to write all the factors of 72 on the board. Please pay attention. 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5 is not a factor, 6, 8, 9, 12, 18, 24, 36 and 72. Okay. Uh, these are the 12 factors of 72. Are we sure? Yes, we are absolutely sure. Let's quickly check again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is not there. 6, 7 is not there. Uh, 8, 9, uh, 12, 18, 24, 36, 72. I want you to listen and understand three important things. Please listen to and understand three important things. Very important. What is that? The factors of every number will always be in pairs. This is the first important thing. The factors of every number will always be in pairs. Okay? The second. If you take any pair and multiply the two components, you will get the number. 
if you take any pair and multiply the two components in the pair, you will get the number. Second, and third, and equally important, uh, okay, before that, uh, can you tell me children, what is the square root of 72? The square root of 72 is, I'm not sure, but it is approximately 8 point something. How do I know this? The square of 8 is 64, the square of 9 is 81, so the square root of 72 is 8 point something, maybe 8.5, 8.45, something like that. Let's not worry about it. Okay, now what is the third point? The third point is all the numbers on the left hand side are less than under root of 72, while all the numbers on the right hand side are greater than under root of 72. That means if, now bringing you to the conclusion part, if a number has any other factor than 1 and the number itself, then you will get that factor before or by the time you reach under root of n. Alright, it is something like this. If 72 is going to be divisible by 18, then the pair component of 18 will divide 72 before you reach under root of 72. And that is why, let's go back, check the divisibility by all the prime numbers up to under root of n. Now, uh, the last important point here, why should I check only by the prime numbers? Why, why not by all the numbers? Now look at this important point. One of the factors of 72 is 6. But 6 exists in mathematics because there are two prime numbers called 2 and 3. And therefore, we can very easily say that prime numbers are the basic building blocks of entire mathematics. And therefore, children, you would see, you can observe, you can check that in all mathematical uh, calculations which are based on numbers, your, your understanding of the concept will be based on its prime and uh, composite components. Alright, so check the divisibility by all the prime numbers up to under root of n. The last point that I wish to share with all of you related to prime and composite numbers and then we close this lesson. What is that? The, that is a property, every prime number Every prime number other than 2 and 3 can be every prime number other than 2 and 3 can be written as a multiple of 6 plus 1 or a multiple of 6 minus 1. Okay, please listen to this. Every prime number other than 2 and 3 can be written as a multiple of 6 plus 1 or a multiple of 6 minus 1. Can I give you examples? Absolutely. 7. 7 can be written as 6 into 1 plus 1. Okay. Uh, what is the next prime number? 11. 11 can be written as 6 into 2 minus 1. What is the next one? 13. 6 into 2 plus 1. What is the next one? 17. 6 into 3 minus 1. So every prime number other than 2 and 3, other than 2 and 3, can always be written either in this form or in this form. Okay, the last two minutes of this lesson. I am not saying that the reverse is true. Please listen to this carefully. I am not saying that the reverse is true. A number which can be written in this form may or may not be prime. But every prime number other than 2 and 3 can definitely be written as a multiple of 6 plus 1 or a multiple of 6 minus 1. So children, prime and composite numbers and understanding prime and composite numbers is going to be very important for all of us. And I hope you would have seen and understood a lot of important concepts as a part of this lesson. Thank you.